welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Ralph Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schiffedecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the podcast for November 27th, 2022, uh, and the text is from the prophet Habakkuk. And it is parts of chapters one and two and three. Um, we are fast forward 100 years from where we were uh, last week, the last couple weeks. Uh, Habakkuk actually doesn't have any dates in uh, it's it's not dated as the other as many other prophetic books are, but we know from the content it's got to be right around uh, right around the year um, 600 or so. The uh, Babylonians are coming, and the whole thing. I I want to say this: one way to approach the book Habakkuk is that it is an answer to the question, "What is faith?" So uh, chapter one is uh, two dialogues back and forth between the prophet and God. In the first one, uh, the prophet says, hey, why are, why are your people so unjust? Why is there injustice in the people of God? And then God says, okay, I'm going to send the Babylonians to punish you. And then the prophet goes, wait a second, that's not a very good answer. And then God says, well, tell you what, um, I'm going to send you uh, a vision, but until then the righteous shall live by faith. This famous verse, the just shall live by faith. Paul quotes uh, most uh, most importantly in Romans. And then if you go to the end of the book, ch uh, chapter 3, verses 17, 18, and 19, is an image of what that faith, faith that waits on God, faith that is justified and righteous, looks like. Here's what faith looks like. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the trees, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, the flock is cut off from the fold and there's no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. So um, there we go. That's my take on the book of Habakkuk. So it's, it's worth a, noting. Oh, go ahead. It's, it's just worth noting that it's the first, this is the text for the first Sunday of Advent uh, in the narrative lectionary. So we moved uh, last week. Uh, I don't, I think we forgot to mention explicitly, but last week was Christ the King Sunday. And we talked about, uh, you know, the, uh, the threat from the King of Assyria to Jerusalem and then God's, um, God's message that they shall beat their swords into plowshares. So the, the King, uh, the true King is, uh, is God. Um, and here, the first Sunday of Advent, uh, it's not it's not your typical, right? It's not a familiar text associated with Advent. Uh, and yet, uh, as you said, I think a couple of weeks ago, Joy, right? Advent is not just celebrating, you know, the first coming of Christ as a baby in the manger, but it's really looking forward uh, and anticipating the second coming of Christ. And so... Uh, Perhaps it's appropriate that, um, you know, that as we look to the second coming of Christ, it doesn't seem like the Prince of Peace is reigning <laughs> in the world today. And so this, these questions that uh, Habakkuk raises in chapter one, oh, Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen or cry to you violence and you will not save? Uh, the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. It seems to describe our world uh, and maybe our world in every age, but particularly now uh, as we see um, war uh, and injustice in Ukraine and other places in the world. In, in uh, I really appreciate that, Catherine. It, it um, really goes along with uh, the chapter three that Rolf uh, pointed us to in the question Rolf put before us, what does faith look like? Um, it's hard when the greatest thing that God has done was done 2000 years ago. And, and this is an opportunity if we were to look at the season of Advent in this season of expectation, that is a reminder that we are waiting for the fullness of the reign of God and that until that comes, what we will see, and we did talk about this a few few weeks ago, what we will see is this injustice. And what we have with Habakkuk is this conversation where 
It is not the prophet talking to the people, which we get early on in the in the prophets. Uh, Isaiah at the beginning of Isaiah, uh, Micah, um, uh, the the prophet speaking to the people. Here we have the prophet speaking directly to God, and it's a lament. It mm-hmm. is it is a longing for difference, a difference among the very people of God. And why do I have to see this? Why is this happening? And I read God's response first as, I know, right? (laughs) And then, so this is what I'm going to do. And as Ralph has already pointed out, whoa, wait a minute. You are choosing a people that's even worse than us. I mean, the, the Babylonians, are you kidding me? They, they, they're worse than us. They, we're bad, but no, they're really, really bad. And it's a reminder of this um, reality that God does not allow any injustice, does not allow any um, uh, unrighteousness to go Um, unpunished. Uh, God notices and it's in the very character of uh, of these nations to act this way. And so God is going to use that to call account to Israel who are supposed to be different. And and then when 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 Habakkuk says, "I, I, I don't know about this, God says, I'm not done. And you're going to need to take note on this, write this down, get this right. And then it becomes the fullness of the, of the promise. This is not about one nation overpowering another. This is not about who wins the war this decade. I'm making you a promise. And that promise is for the fullness. And until that fullness comes, The way you will tell the difference between the righteous and the unrighteous, the faithful and the unfaithful, are those who will live by faith, trusting in God and in God's goodness and in God's covenant keeping promise. So so your task, dear preachers, you know, in this Advent time, as in every time, is to make the vision plain, right? (laughs) Uh, in in chapter two, there's still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. Write the vision, make it plain on tablets. Uh, when all evidence is to the contrary, as you've already talked about, Ralph, right? When the fig tree doesn't blossom and there's no food on the vines and the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold. All When all evidence is to the contrary, it's your responsibility and your privilege, dear working preachers, to uh, to make the vision plain, to to to, uh, to still cast that vision, to still proclaim that vision of the appointed time when God uh, will reign uh, and when justice will prevail, and uh, and to rejoice in that. That's that's your task this Advent and really uh, throughout the year.